Five brand new mutations have been added to Grounded as part of the super duper update, making this one of the best they've had in a while. There's so much new stuff, and I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about the five brand new mutations today. Warning though, there's quite a lot of this end game content being shown off here. This is definitely more of a preview for players that are more experienced and knowing about locations and stuff. Things may be subject to change as this is obviously from the PTB. The full update's not out yet for a week or two. So I'll most likely do full individual guides when we get the final update go live. But here's the first look on how to trigger and get all of the new goodies. So haul in hero you unlock by placing new items down to get the cozy buffs. If you place enough items around you, you can unlock different levels of coziness. They'll also give you extra buffs, but when you get to level two, it unlocks haul in hero one. With it equipped, you'll now be able to carry 10 grass planks without any other equipment or any other trinkets. Get Cozy level 3 and then you unlock Hall in Hero level 2 and this will give you a chance to carry 15 Grass Planks. And then get Cozy level 4 and you get level 3 of the Hall in Hero. So roughly, I'm going to do a better guide for coziness in a separate guide, but you do need a variety of items. You can't just put 50 picture frames. The more advanced materials will give you better cozy rating too. And this will then unlock 20 grass planks without anything else. By my calculations, that means you should be able to carry 44, maybe 45 grass planks now if you've got the right gear, equipment and trinkets. Next up, fairly simple one, Sour Sensation. It's just like the spicy cha-cha and the fresh defense in that you just need to eat pieces of a sour sweet and it will unlock the first one, giving you a small increase in fawns damage. So if an ant hits you, it's gonna take 7% damage back and that scales to any creature. So we'll use this against a bigger, tankier creatures and bosses. Shout out to Spicy there for that tip. Go ahead and eat another four and you'll get level two. So that's five of the sour sweets total and eat 10 sour sweets in total and you'll get level three. So you might not see too much of a difference against smaller creatures, but it's roughly around 24% damage back when an enemy hits you. So level 1, 7%, level 2, 14, level 3, 24%. Definitely have this equipped when taking on bigger creatures. So massive spoiler territory now for the end game, but you're going to need to find 7 figurines. The first one you'll find is going to be at the hedge lab. Each one of these you'll find at one of the laboratories in the game. The easiest one to get is the aphid figurine, which you'll probably find inside the hedge laboratory just here. This unlocks Rascal Rogue, which will give you the ability to basically steal extra loot from creatures. Not too sure on percentages yet, but level 1 basically means you've got a small chance of getting extra staff resources when you're attacking creatures using a melee weapon. There's three levels of this mutation. The second stage of it you get after getting four figurines, and the third stage is after getting all seven. This is why it's quite spoilerific, as this is revealing lots of stuff about the end game. You can't get this yoked girl figurine until you complete all the mixers. Then obviously you've got to head over to the Black Ant Laboratory. So obviously this is where you get the prod smacker. Next one's in the Haze Laboratory, in the room with all of the fungal growth that's exploding, just where you turn on the doorway so you can actually go and face off against the Haze boss. And you'll find this little weevil just here, somewhat hidden behind that counter unit. This next one's probably one of the toughest ones to find. It's in the Koya Laboratory. You need to go into the underwater section where you need to swim to the next area to press the button to unlock the door to the lab. And it is pretty tough because you go through all of this area here and then you go through to the next broken laboratory section. Swim across and obviously you see the scamp underneath normally where you can get it with the clay. There's usually a diving bell spider in here as well and it's actually behind me. So it did take a massively long time to find this. I'd scoured ages looking all around the labs. There you can see it's hidden just there. That one was probably the toughest one to find. I spent ages looking around all the laboratories but yeah eventually got it inside that area. This is not something you should be aiming to get completely out of the bat. This is something you'll just find along as you're making progress. Hence why I put the spoiler tag. Because this next one is in the Javamatic storage room. Just on the left hand side room as you enter. And you should find the Mant figurine on the shelf just here. Remember you can't get in this room until you've gone ahead and completed the shed. 
Speaking of the shed, there is also one in here as well. You're going to have to defeat the boss that's inside, making your way through all the way to the end laboratories. Speak to Wendell that's inside here. I was quite surprised this wasn't one of them. I was sure this was going to be what I was looking for, but nope, I did end up finding it here instead on the shelf just before you exit the laboratory near where the termite home is. And the last one is where you fight Director Schmetter inside the orc receiver room, just behind some of these consoles here. You should find the uh, Mordok one. So yes, it's pretty obvious when you go in creative mode and spawn in these statues, it obviously tells you what the figurines are, the statues are, and so that gave me the idea that they must be all inside the qualifying labs. The only one that really was difficult was that pond one. I did breeze through them because it's not something that you should be aiming to just do in one day if you're new to Grounded or haven't completed the game yet. It's not a must-have mutation that you should absolutely go for. Just play the game and just make sure you look out for these as you complete in each laboratory. So yeah, that's what it does. While in combat, while using a melee weapon, you've got a chance of picking up resources. You can see here this fire ant. I managed to get a fire ant part. And then against this ladybird, I got a ladybird shell. You can also increase this, I do believe, by rubbing some of your stuff creatures for luck. And that also contributes to it, I think. Two more to go, both of these found in the new wasp area. One from a burgle chip and one from defeating the wasp queen. This is going to give you Dissection Expert, and this means that you will get more chance of getting rare resources. So if you want Black Ox Horns, equip this mutation, kill Black Oxes, and you've got more chance of getting the Horns. It's in this blue ball next to the Black Widow, and if you do what I'm doing now with wide interaction on in accessibility, you can reach up and get it without having to climb and jump. You then take the chip back to Burgle, and you can see you can buy it for 3000 raw science. A game changer for players that really do hunt the rarest resources to craft certain things. It also works for trinkets as well from creatures and bugs. So definitely use it if you're trying to get some of the harder boss trinkets. The last one is the only one I haven't really been able to show properly because I did this solo. But you basically get it as a reward for killing the Wasp Queen. It should pop up the Bardic Inspiration. It's a support class mutation designed for you and your friends to basically give your friends more chance of critical hits and possibly extra damage. So, of course, you do need to go ahead and kill the Wasp Queen and it should pop up, although I'd already unlocked it when I showed off this gameplay using some of the cheats and mods that I used to go ahead and make some of these guides. But yeah, while you've got this mutation active and you fire a shot, if your friends are close by, then there's a 10% chance of them getting a special buff that will do more critical hit damage and extra damage. It does supposedly apply to you as well. Again, shout out to Spicy for some of that data. I'm going to do a bit more testing with that in the future though. They may add more, but I think that will probably be it for this update. It does seem like quite a lot, five brand new mutations. A lot of them are about helping out experienced players or players that are getting through quite a lot of the game now to give them quick and easy ways to get more loot and stuff. So I really appreciate a lot of them. Let me know what you think about them, and I will see you for more guides for the Super Duper update incoming very soon. Until next time, Ratbags, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you later.